My name's Ben McCary. I'm the Head of English here at the Cooper School in Bicester, and I also coordinate the use of new technologies across the curriculum. My job is to get teachers and students involved in using technology in all areas of their learning. Um, it's been a very interesting journey here over the last couple of years, um, and we've brought a lot of different technologies into the classroom. We like to see it as a menu, really, that teachers and students can choose from. Um, and I think the key element there is choice. We've brought in things like student response handsets. We've brought in netbooks for students to use for assessments during lessons. We've brought in video cameras. We've started using mobile devices. And one of the biggest innovations has been the use of Web 2 technology, so things like blogging to allow students to learn and interact from home. But the key element in all of it has been choice, choice for the teacher and choice for the students. I'm Aidan, I've just finished my English GCSE and I go to Cooper School in Bicester. It's a, well it's like a website that you can visit at home or on your iPod or whatever and you can go on there if you're advising, you can find videos, blogs, notes, whatever, essay questions to practice on, you can download audio tapes of him reading the short stories for poems. And it's just really helpful if you want kind of a different way to revise. Um, I'm Cassie. I'm a student at Cooper School and I'm in year 11, but I did my GCSEs in year 10. The English podcasts are like videos that Mr McCary does that is like a revision tool to help people study for their GCSEs. And basically he just talks you through the meaning of the poem and like what's going on and how different lines in the um, poem could be interpreted. And it's just a way to get ideas and to help you understand the poem. It's been a very interesting journey. I think we started out with some scepticism and the whole project's gathered momentum. So now, looking on our school website, walking around the school, wherever you go, the students are engaged in their learning through technology, the teachers are experimenting with it and gaining confidence, and the whole project's gathering its own momentum. If you go onto the Cooper School website, then you can download them and then you can get them on your iPod or even your phone if you have a good one. The videos are really easy to get to. Like, I can just go on YouTube on my phone and there they are. Simple. Just watch them through on a train, in bed, wherever really. I think it gives you like a different views on the piece of text you're studying. Like, where you're reading it, you only kind of get one point of view. But if you've got Sir reading through it, you may be using different tones of voice and stuff then it gives you a wider understanding of it. It can stick in your head better. You can watch it over a couple of times until you fully understand it. The first impact you see on outcomes on school improvement is a greater enthusiasm for learning. I think the overwhelming majority of the students in our school live a life where technology is a central part of that life. They have a mobile phone, they have an Xbox, they have a PlayStation at home. They spend a, pro a decent proportion of their evening on the internet with two or three browser windows open. And by allowing them to use that in their learning, we're increasing their motivation to learn their engagement with the school curriculum and obviously off the back of that, outcomes will improve. Um, similarly, the, the perennial issue of homework, which you know, you're driving students to complete tasks, often just for the sake of it, we're managing to turn that more from homework into home learning. We're able to provide visual tools, video, podcasts, that kind of thing for students to work from home. They're able to ask for help from home over blogs and all of it's incredibly simple, it's incredibly user-friendly. So again, we're able to support that learning it's able to become a deeper experience and move beyond the confines of the 9 to 3.30 school day. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm in Year 11 and I took my English GCSE last year. Um, it's a revision blog, so each year group has one. And on that it's got the poems um, and practice essay questions, where basically you look at the questions and then you write the essay and you can post it. And so I can give you feedback on how, where to improve and everything. That's really handy because not only do you get feedback from yours, but you can read other people's and see like their ideas and everything. We're seeing more students than ever at the top end gain A and A star levels. This year, um, in English literature, against FFTD of 20%, we actually achieved 32% A and A star for GCSE literature. And a lot of that is off the back of the independence that students are able to use in their work and to apply in their work. Um, and a lot of that comes from the use of technologies, from the use of blog, from the use of video lessons. Um, and the impact on learning is therefore massive and the impact on results. Um, the overall pass rate in the school over the past four or five years has gone up exponentially. But more than that, the students are enjoying their learning more, they're choosing to continue learning and they're becoming lifelong learners. So yes, the results are improving, but also the students' attitude to learning and their enjoyment of learning is improving as well. I really think these revision videos helped me with my GCSE because it helped me 
figure out what to write. Um, it helped me analyse it in my own head and work out what was going on in the poem and find out different meanings to each poem and the hidden meanings and everything. I think that it helped me get a good grade because um, sometimes if you're sick and you miss a lesson and you don't know that much about a poem or if something's just really hard to grasp and you have problems asking in class or if you know there's been a lot going on in class and you haven't had really time to ask or if you're having a lot of trouble revising for all your other subjects that you're doing because it can be really hard when you're studying a lot of stuff. It's just easy to have a revision tool that doesn't require you to write a lot or to, like you can just sit and relax and listen to it and it's easy to learn. I think the first thing I say to other schools is don't be afraid to take risks. I think learning has looked the same for 150 years and actually now's the time to change it. We need to be looking to the way companies are working, to the way the world of work that our students are going to go into, to what that looks like and mirroring that and using those ideas in their learning experiences. Um, schools don't need to be institutional. They don't need to be regimented. A bit of noise in the classroom is okay. Things will go wrong. But actually, in terms of technology specifically, this is something that is part of students' lives and it will be part of their world of work. So you've got to take the opportunity to allow them to use it, to play with it, to break down those barriers. Um, we spend so long telling students not to bring their mobile phones into class or to switch them off, but why not embrace that? Why not allow them to use the video camera on their phone, to text message each other with ideas, to log on to Twitter and to tweet what they're learning over the internet so that they can all share in that experience. It can really revolutionise revolutionize your lessons. Um, I'd also say, you know, the, the first thing I I say whenever I lead technology training in this school is things will go wrong. We're dealing with electricity, we're dealing with computers, things will always go wrong. But you have to embrace that. And the other thing I always say to staff is if you don't know, you can guarantee somebody else in the room does know. There are 30 minds in that room and if it's not something you know, the students will help you out. And actually then the, the learning experience becomes a far more vital one and a far more creative one. I think you've got to encourage risk taking, you've got to encourage creativity. And off the back of that, the learning will always improve. Ben Baxter head teacher of a Cooper School Vista uh, in Oxfordshire. What was clear about three years ago was we needed to take the next step. We were still, I think, um, although we'd given teachers the tools, there was still too much didactic teaching going on, or there was a danger of that. I say learning had been the focus, there'd been massive improvements in how learning was taking place and how teaching was taking place. But if we're going to move on to that next level of really preparing students for the 21st century world, we had to A, invest in the technologies, but we also had to get them using technology as an integral part of their own learning. This is the technology which students are using. Um, I can remember coming in five years ago, having to clamp down on certain things, and one of the things was use of mobile phones. Had I known then how technology was going to be developed, I would not have been maybe so gung-ho in doing that in the first place, because now, in a sense, I actively encourage. Why would you not embrace this technology? It's a technology which the students have, it's the technology the students use, it's the technology they're comfortable with. Why would you have a situation where you would still now have a student copying off a whiteboard? If that information is there, A, why isn't it on the web? Why isn't it available as a podcast or a vodcast? But even more simply, if there is information which the teacher has put on a whiteboard, which they want to communicate to students, why aren't they actively encouraging them to take their phones out and take a picture of it? We embraced the development of our website. Um, our website now has huge amounts of resources. All departments are using it. We have got lots of blogging going on. Most of the staff of the school are using blogging. Um, I myself have got a top year 10 set. We're blogging because it's instant accessibility. Students are able to write a paragraph on a homework. I'm able to respond to it. Other students can add to it. Other students can see what someone else has written and comment on it. It's instant, it's immediate, it's the technology they're using and it's also driving through improvements in their learning. The students are saving their work, they can transport it home with them. It's making that sort of continuum between school and home just a natural continuum rather than an artificial break. This is not now the technological age, this is not the age of technology, this is the age of learning. And if as school leaders we do not embrace that, we are in danger of losing a whole generation of learners because that is what they learn, that is how they learn, that is the preferred learning style. If we don't buy into it, then they are going to increasingly see a lack of relevance in school and a lack of relevance in what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis.